Cheers, guys. Epix here. Welcome to episode 19 of the VR show. This is going to be a bit of a holiday themed episode, guys. In today's VR chat, I'm going to talk about games best played in small groups. We hear it all the time from the naysayers, you know, about VR not being social. I'm not going to touch on the games that are multiplayer by nature, like Elite, which you can play with people online. I'm talking about the asymmetrical local multiplayer style games, the co-op games, things that are fantastic for people that aren't necessarily gamers to experience. So these are by no means my top ones. These are just some that I cherry picked more for the group size, partially for the experience, but really guys, as you can see from the link I'm gonna put in the description for a whole listing of all the asymmetrical ones that exist, it's a massive list. 30 plus titles on that list. So instead, I've cherry picked some across, you know, a variety of platforms for a variety of group sizes. That's gonna be in today's VR chat segment. In VR Roundup, all the current events and news in and around the world of VR, all platforms, and in the VR XP segment, uh, games released the last week or titles we can look forward to over the coming months. All that and more. So if you're not in the holiday spirit, guys, uh, and fair enough if that's not your bag, but hopefully the video you know, gives you some ideas of things you can do with small groups or buddies anyways. And with that said, guys, sit back, chillax. Let's take a week, let's take a look rather, at this week's VR Roundup. In a sign that the Oculus Quest appears to still be on track for a spring 2019 launch, filings from Facebook for the headset have appeared at the US Federal Communications Commission, or FCC for short. As with other devices that have electromagnetic emissions, FCC passage is required before the item can go full retail mode. The Quest wasn't itself specifically named, but the filings do show the familiar silhouette of the Quest. Also of note in the filing is the listing of 5 GHz Wi-Fi, which will provide the Quest with much needed additional streaming bandwidth. Steam's annual winter sale is here again and it will stay until January 3rd. VR well represented with a total of 140 VR games, you heard me right. Some of my favorite titles for obscenely good prices. Listen to this guys, Elite Dangerous, $7 US, basically the price of an overcharged Starbucks coffee, that's 76% off. Serious Sam VR Bundle, that's every one of the VR games, $16.75, that's 90% off. Fallout 4 VR, 50% off at $30 US. Skyrim VR, also 30 bucks US, that's 50% off. And really, a bunch more. Definitely get yourself on over to Steam VR, check out uh, the title. Some amazing deals to be had to stock that library for sure. VR Geneers, the prog based VR startup behind the Enterprise X doll headsets, say that they're going to be working on a consumer friendly version that's going to have the same wide field of view. This part's interesting. The company also announcing that they're going to be working with fellow VR YouTubers, MRTV, Swiviver, and Voodoo DE. Now, if they sound familiar, it's because they, of course, helped Pimax in much the same way. They are under a non disclosure agreement, but apparently, work on testing will begin in earnest in 2019. I'll keep you updated as I have news. Here's an interesting uh, technological take on the VR motion sickness issue. Stepping Stone VR thinking its approach to VR locomotion might be the one to solve VR motion sickness. The company working on a motion platform using electromagnetic propulsion. You can see in the video here the platform physically moving someone around as in this case they are sitting but a version for standing as well in the works. You can see it here in early prototype still, but the idea being that the sensations of physically moving that the player would feel should help to combat the motion sickness in any games that utilize or make use of smooth locomotion, like for example, Fallout, Skyrim, etc. While it all looks very expensive, the company maintains they are targeting a consumer-friendly product. Where I get a little bit nervous 
is when they say they're preparing a Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign. Uh, it's been my experience, the more technical these things are, well, the less likely they are to usually succeed. Love to have one that actually works though, but uh, not quite so optimistic, but we'll see where it goes. Here's a good story to contrast against IMAX's uh, horrible marketing with their VR experience centers. Dave and Buster's having such a success with their Jurassic Park VR ride have said they're pretty much all in with VR. And now this, the North American Food Entertainment and Restaurant Bar getting a new VR themed experience called Dragon Frost from Deb's VR Studios. The experience will be at all more than 100 locations. Each seated person entering the experience will get their own dragon to ride and a slightly different story and flight path. If you recently purchased an Oculus Go or know you're going to be getting one for the holidays, uh, I'm gonna include this link in the description below. It's from the website Upload VR. They've got a list of the top 30 must download Oculus Go apps and games. So go check that out. They've got a pretty good cross selection, different genres, different styles of games within genres. Uh, all in all, a pretty decent list. Beat Saber gets another free track. This one's called Pop Stars from KDA, which is uh, a virtual K-pop group created by Riot Games featuring League of Legends champions. I mentioned this uh, in the uh, PSVR Frank video, not really my kind of music, uh, may or may not be yours as well. Either way, the video getting an impressive 120 million views on YouTube. So take that for what it is. Firewall Zero Hour getting its third DLC back on the 18th. It's uh, a map called Containment, a bunch of updates uh, as well. It takes place in Greenland, an infectious disease lab. So you're basically trying to prevent the diseases from getting out. Some of the features they've added, the ability to deal with AFK players, the ability to speak with your teammates during loading screens, addition of contractor eye movement in the lobby, and for PlayStation 4 Pro users, anti-aliasing. Jeff Minter, AKA the Yak, he from Lamasoft, a developer that goes way back to the Commodore 64 days. He's released Polybius, his PlayStation VR game onto the Oculus Rift. Didn't have the funds to develop a Vive version at this time, but uh, if you're looking for a retro style VR game, look no further than Polybius. Well, a game that's been on tablets and phones forever, Angry Birds coming to VR in the form of Angry Birds Isle of Pigs. This is gonna be coming sometime in uh, 2019. Don't have an exact date or price as of yet, just that it's gonna be available for all major VR platforms. Uh, even that doesn't tell us specifically which ones. As I find out, I'll let you know here. All right guys, so mentioned in the intro for the VR chat, I wanna talk about titles that you can play with small groups of people. I mentioned the naysayers and the VR being, you know, we know all of that. We're not going to flog that horse. Been there, done that, wore the shirt. We're not wearing it again. Instead, I want to focus on some titles that you can play with another person co-op or with a small group that isn't necessarily composed of gamers. Maybe it's family and friends. They've never tried VR. Uh, you know, they're curious about it. Hell, they may not even know about it and you're gonna get them to experience it anyways. Uh, all these games that I mentioned are just a blast to play with people in the same room. For a full list of titles that kind of fit under the asymmetrical multiplayer ones, and that usually means one person wearing VR and then others with game pads or mouse keyboard play via traditional means. Monitor, maybe it's a big screen TV in the living room, etc. So let's start off with kind of the co-op. You and a buddy. There's one title that I want to mention right off the bat. It's called Black Hat Cooperative. And what this is, is a high security facility. You're trying to get to a central objective. You've got the person with the virtual reality head mounted display, which is Vive or Rift for this one. Wasn't able to find this for PlayStation VR, but there are titles like it. We'll talk about some in a few. 
And then the other person is guiding them along through traditional means via a 2D monitor. They see where the security camera sweeps, you know, the sweeping arc, etc. And through words alone, you need to guide the person with the VR to that central objective using words or, you know, to the effect of, okay, there's a security camera in front of you to avoid it. Hug to that wall on your right. Okay, great. See that door, continue to hug the wall. As Soon as you enter, walk straight, don't deviate. Those types of instructions, just a hell of a lot of fun. You can then trade off, of course. Keep talking, no one explodes is another one. You can play with two or, and this really straddles both group sizes, a small group as well. As it sounds like in the title, you've got somebody who's diffusing the bomb, and then you've got the person or persons with the instructions on how to actually do that. Now, there are more titles. Those are just a couple. I want to instead focus a bit more time on the small group aspect and games played there. Starting off with Ruckus Ridge. Now, this is a hunt and seek game. And right away, that sounds serious. It sounds ominous. It's not a game that takes itself very seriously, guys. And, and for all these titles, I would say they're all family friendly. Everything I'm talking about, my personal group of friends, they're probably okay. and might even prefer the more gratuitous stuff because we're a bit twisted. But these are all, for the most part, kind of cartoony and a bit more don't take themselves too seriously. So Ruckus Ridge, Hunt and Seek, you've got the hunter and you've got the hunted. And the hunted are up to three gamepad wielding other players, again, through traditional means, and the hunter, the person wearing the VR headset. Now, I did forget to mention with Keep Talking and No One Explodes, it's pretty much on every single platform. If you've got a Go, Rift, Vive, PlayStation VR, you're covered with that one. That's why I mentioned it. With Ruckus Ridge, we're talking Vive and Rift and probably the usual suspects like the Windows Mixed Reality devices as well. I haven't tried that personally, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. Another Vive and Rift one, Mass Exodus. What I love about this one is the setting. It's an eerie Android style factory. You've got the ominous overseer, the person wearing the virtual reality headset, and then up to four gamepad wielding players who are sentient androids. They've woken up, so to speak, and want to get the hell out of Dodge, right? They don't want to wind up in the scrap heap. They want to save themselves and their fellow comrades. They're trying to get out of the complex and you can meld in with other androids. So even if you're essentially spotted, you're not really. It's just a fantastic game, a good game to play in small groups. The other one you've probably seen is Pictionary. Now the focus is usually on the Vive and Tilt Brush because Tilt Brush has that feature to show the person with the headset a word that no one else sees. But really, you can come up with words other ways and really use any paint program at all. Anything that can project on a monitor, TV, you could use and it would work for Pictionary. So pretty much any platform that has a paint program would work for Pictionary. Always a tried and true game to play with small groups. And then I want to focus on PlayStation VR just so they're not left out. Uh, there's a title that usually gets overlooked. It is, of course, The Playroom, which features seven mini games. So there are actually, there's one that's kind of co-op-y, and then the six others are all ones probably playing in the background that you can do, again, with small groups. Hell of a lot of fun. Uh, guys, let me know if there was any in this list that I missed, which I know there are because that link in the description has, like I said, 30 plus, but maybe ones you've personally tried that you'd like to recommend to other people. Let them know and myself know in the description or in the comments, guys. And then I want to end things off in the VR chat with games you don't necessarily equate with being social, but end up being fantastic for that scenario regardless. I'm going to start off with the champion, Google Earth VR. I find that title single-handedly almost more than any other. Runs the gamut from young to old, gamers to non-gamers, really... Anyone can play this and get some enjoyment. 
So what do you do with Google Earth VR, you ask? It can be all types of stuff. Know your audience, right? Don't come up with your favorite vacation spots knowing full well that two couples in attendance can't afford to even go camping, right? That's kind of common sense, but maybe it's places you grew up, places you've all visited, you know, um, recommended places, places to avoid. There's so many things that you can come up with. Childhood haunts, where'd you go to school, all of those things you can do with Google Earth VR. I tell you guys, I've done this probably more than half a dozen times and it eats up hours quicker than you'd ever believe it could. And people are having fun. It's just a fantastic time and it's free. It's Google Earth VR. Some countries don't have street views. Most or a lot of countries do. So a fantastic title nonetheless. Next one up, Beat Saber. We know it's, a, it's you know, one of those games that what's fantastic about it is you can do all kinds of competitions, friendly of course, with groups. You can challenge each other to songs. Do the typical high score, you know, who can get the highest score, uh, which couple, if it's a couples thing, combine the scores, right, uh, for champion couple. So you could have a weak link, but maybe your spouse is that much better and you could still triumph overall with your points. You get the gist of it. So much you can do with Beat Saber. You can agree on music. You can torture each other. Maybe nobody likes country music in the group etc right using custom tracks or you use the official ones stick to the more electronic you get you get what i'm saying hell of a lot of fun so again guys let us know what you would recommend in the comments below we're going to end things there guys my turn to say thank you so much for the support we'll be back with a new year's and a kind of a, a recap of the year episode i know i had that layoff of six plus months earlier this year but i do appreciate all of you new and old, those who stuck by me, guys, so much appreciated. It's just been fantastic. Can't thank you enough. Wish you, your family, your friends, all the best. Relax, chillax, and even if you don't celebrate, hopefully you get some R&R in. &R in. <laughs> all right, guys, as always, have a fantastic week. We'll catch you on the VR flip side. Cheers.